Green salutations, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Devin, and welcome to my overview of my tile-based collision system. Now, first off, what is a tile-based collision system? Well, a tile-based collision system is collisions without using objects, basically, at least as far as Game Maker is concerned. Um, I know that, at least based on what I've read up on, it was actually used a whole lot in NES games, which is actually super cool. But to kind of show you what's going on here, if I go ahead and open up my room here, now you'll see this. Uh, this looks like a pretty typical game room. You know, you, you got your player object right here. We got Happy Harry. We got box. We got some flooring and some walls. But uh, I got some kind of cool to show you. So I'm going to just go ahead and run the game. And uh, just so you can kind of, so you can kind of, kind of see something. Yes, I am recording at 6 o'clock in the morning. So, look at that instant ca instance count. Only three objects. And those objects are the player object and two control objects. Other than that, you know, there's these walls, they, they technically don't exist. They're, they're, they're not objects. They're, they're only tiles. They're only uh, image stuffs. Now, how cool is that? You can make your game super fast, and if we go ahead and look at objects, you, you, you don't have to put down wall objects. All you do is put down the tiles and pay up your level, and you're good to go. And this, the system handles the rest for you as far as collisions. Now, if that ain't badass, I don't know what is. So why don't I go ahead and show you now how this system works. So... I got a couple. I got some example objects going on, and it, it, all those are included with the engine. Um, to start off, you know, of course, we got our room here, and under tiles we have uh, you know different layers. We got negative fifteen, negative ten. Now, something I'm going to show you real quick. Now, you can do a lot more than just simply make collidable tiles, and I'll show you how all that works here within the system. So here we have this box. If I jump. Well, not on top of the box, I can jump this high. Well, on top of the box, I can only do low jumps. That is by design, and let me show you. So let me go ahead and open up our uh, platforming example player, special tile conditions. If tile meeting Y plus 1, 3, jump speed equals 2. Otherwise, jump speed equals 7. So what's going on here is when you're on top of a tile that returns 3, your jump speed isn't as high. It's pretty simple, right? So you're probably wondering, you know, hey, you know, why three? Why such an arbitrary number? Well, let me show you. So what we got going on here, I'll just kind of run through it. In our examples, we have a controller. Let's go ahead and check the create again, create event. Now, in order to initiate the system, you have to run this script. This contains core configuration. You know, so it, 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 it needs this to run. Oh, you're not supposed to be there. Go away. But anyway, so we have this script. Add collision layer. Negative 15, 3, true. Negative 15 is the tile layer. Now, if you create a new tile layer and designate it negative 15, any tiles that are put down on that layer will return 3 in the scripts that call x and y values within that tile. And then saying that to true makes it uh, solid. So, that, if you, obviously, if you set that to false, the player will be able to just walk right through it player or anything else for that matter. You, you'll, you'll see. I got a parent object that you put it to. So, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and uh, cre create a new... Uh, I'll just go ahead and walk you through it. We'll just go ahead and create a new, a new layer here. So, we'll go ahead and make a layer at negative 20. We'll make it return 4. Yeah, there we go. That'll do nicely. Boom. Okay, so now we have a, uh, a condition. So... What's going to happen is if we have a tile layer or a, 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 a tile block at layer uh, negative 20, it is actually going to return 4. But, you know, first got to make the tile layer. So we're going to hit add negative 20. Boom. Now I'll go ahead and uh, grab our uh, tiles here. Let's just put down another box. So this box is placed on layer negative 20. So all the scripts associated with this engine will return four because you know it's on negative twenty and we have and we have designated you know in this uh in the you know right here that anything that's on negative twenty will return four. Now let's hop back down to our platforming engine here. So what we're getting or our platforming object. 
So what we have here is, uh, well, you know, let's just go ahead and add a new condition. So I'll just, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Make some minor changes. Boom. Now we're going to change this to 4, because obviously we all we want to do is check if we're standing on top of a 4 or not. And let's just, let's just make it so that uh, if that sprite underscore index is equal to, uh, excuse me, sprdt call grump. Yep, that's right. When stand on top of the box on the left, we're going to turn into Grumpy Graham. Let's see, else? Because we definitely want to be able to turn back. Sprite underscore index is equal to sprdt call happy. There we go. Now, in theory, what should happen is when we stand on top of the box to the left, we'll turn into Grumpy Graham. Otherwise, it will just simply be regular happy. So we're happy. Here we can't jump as high. Stand on top of this. Boom. We are now grumpy. Not grumpy. Grumpy. Not grumpy. Grumpy. But anyways, so you can see how you can set conditions on whether or not you're on top of certain sprites. You know, it, it's, 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 it's very simple to use. And you can do it without objects, which makes your game lightning fast, by the way. You know, you can actually you can make much larger levels. You don't have to worry about object management, enabling and disabling stuff. They're too far away. You know, it's 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 all handled for you just through, <coughs> excuse me, through binary logic that I barely understand. I was just barely able to get. I was able to get enough of it together and to work out a system to where it works pretty darn reliably, all things considered. I'm very happy with this. So I've walked you through how to go ahead and make a new tile layer and how to make conditions for that tile layer, which, by the way, like I said, these objects are included. You have two examples. You have a platforming example, with, and you have a uh, top-down example. Now, both of them are childed to this object right here, which is parent underscore entity. Now, childing the object uh, to this makes it so that it will actually interact with the solids. So... If you look in here, we just got some basic variables, um, HP and vSpeed. Th those are the two variables that you need to worry about when you're programming your ch children of this object. Otherwise, this is the code that makes it so that it actually collides with solid tiles. Now, if I hop into my uh, uh, player, now those, whoops, no, don't want that. Those of you who uh, have programmed uh, movement systems in the future, you know, this should not look too foreign. In fact, it should look very familiar. You know, we check whether or not we're grounded. We got left and right input. Uh, we cap how fast we can move. We got jumping. We have, you know, gr we apply gravity if we're not on the ground. And it's all using H speed and V speed. Now, H speed and V speed are variables that are created specifically by our entity object here. And it is through these variables that this. That, um, that solid tiles are a possibility. So as long as you build your children objects, whether it be an enemy object or a player object or really whatever it is that you want it to be, as long as you move things around using the H speed and V speed uh, variables, then you, everything should collide just fine. Now next off, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, dive into the scripts that are included with this extension. So we got a list of scripts here, and then we got these ones here that are tagged under engine. Now, these ones here I do not intend for you to use, but and I'm not really going to go over them either. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll go over them. I, let's see. How long, how long am I going? At? Oh, yeah, I'll go over them. Why not? So we'll just start from the very top. So we have the README, which is exactly what it sounds like. So if you, know, if need, if you need to look over something real quick, it's right there. Um. Uh, position solid returns whether or not a tile in an XY position is solid or not. This is useful if uh, basically if you got got to know if a tile in an XY coordinate is solid. And as you can see, it actually uses two existing scripts. I kind of cheated there, but beside the point. Um, Devon tools TB solid can be used to get or set the solid status of a collision layer. Enter the index. So you enter the index into this uh, into this script. And it will return uh, whether or not it is solid. So it's great for if you're using a detection, one of the detection scripts, such as a get tile or tile meeting, or oh, specifically get tile. And you gotta know if it's solid or not. This, this is this is your guy. 
or if you have something that needs to go through a whole bunch of uh, blocks, you can actually set it so that towards the front, it will sell them to not solid, but then towards the back, it will sell them to solid. And what you will have is kind of like an object that is just blasting through solid, solid tiles. Of course, it would require a little bit more logic than that, but you get the idea. All right, so then uh, next we have... Uh, okay, this is probably one of the more important scripts. This is a script that needs to be run before anything else in the engine. So we have an enumerator here, and you got your base, which is 32. This is a limit of the engine. Um, all of your tiles have to be the same dimensions. Have to be the same dimensions. So... Here we got a base of 32. That means that the tiles that I'm using in this current game are 32 by 32 pixels. Um, these are the options that you can use. 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, or 128. And wall layer is just simply your default wall layer. Um, I just have it set here to 10, but if, but if for whatever reason you need to set it to something else, you can certainly do so. All right, so now we have add collision layer. We use this one as well. This is the script that you use to add your collision layers. Everything is stored in a global two-dimensional array, and uh, the, the engine is able to pluck these values as needed. Get tile. So this, is, uh, this can be thought of as a, a position meeting script, sort of. It checks the X and Y coordinates that you specify, and it returns the index value of the tile that those x and y coordinates are in. And you know as it says right here this is pretty much taken right from the HTML5 tutorial. So yeah, this is uh this is built very much around the HTML5 tutorial that, and the tile-based collision that comes with that. Only of course, you know, I wouldn't have made it mine if I didn't add a whole bunch of goodies to it. So so but yeah, this is this is like I said this is literally plucked right from that engine and it works well. Wouldn't have kept it otherwise. Now next is tile meeting. So this here is essentially a, oh I got this twice for some reason whoops oh well but anyways uh this is essentially your place meeting script or at least the equivalent that goes with this engine it checks various points around the object um, at the edge of the script and then it adjusts and changes it based on what you enter into your x and y values here and then you check what index you're checking for it returns either true or false um, so if you say so, I mean, well, shoot, you know, we'll just go ahead and pull up our platforming object here because we, we use it in our special conditions here. So if uh, place meeting X, or, you know, which is, you know, its exact position, so we're not getting any checks left or right, but then Y plus 1. So if one pixel down is 3, if any of those points at the bottom of the, uh, of the object return 3, then it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. So, like, for instance, we're, on, we're standing on top of the box, and we can't jump as high. If we're standing just to the left of it, the bottom left of it would return 3. So, therefore, it would return true, and it would reduce our jump speed. And then, tile meeting solid. Now, this one here is actually pretty much the exact same thing, only this down here has changed ever so slightly to, to return the solid status of all of them, and if any of them return true, it returns true. That there was useful, if we go into movement here, for checking whether or not we are grounded, you know, whether or not we're standing on top of a solid object. So if, you know, mean solid x, y plus 1 equals true, uh, then ground equals true, else grounded equals false. Now let's go ahead and hop into the engine stuff here. So generate hex. This here's one of these important uh, scripts here. So I have a bunch of uh, hex values here that are... So this is pretty much worked out through uh, some crazy binary and hexadecimal. It's how the logic is done and operators. Now, in order for us to get the proper ones for each, uh, um, each base, I had to kind of calculate these by hand and then you know set some global values based on a switch. Now, our uh, config here, actually, uh, well, actually, first it runs, uh, you know, in the init, which is right here. And then we generate the hex, which then plucks from our tiles.base, our enumerator. But then I guess we can just go ahead and hop on over to our init. Our, in our init, we go ahead and generate the very first entry for uh, the walls layer. 
you know, as you can see, we're just kind of manually doing it using our uh, collision groups here. And then we got instance create. It creates this uh, controller object here. And 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 it uh, you know gives you a nice little debug message, which is nice. But this con this controller object here, which by the way exists throughout the entire game, I'll go ahead and uh, pull this up right here. It serves one purpose and one purpose only: create map. So there's another global array that is uh, wiped and re recreated every time a room is initiated. And what's going on here is you have an array. And uh, it's basically a list of uh, what tiles are what indexes. And, uh, in fact, if we uh, go ahead and uh, run this here, and this is, once again, straight from the uh, um, tile-based collision, or the uh, HTML5 tutorial, look down here. Hey, actually, this is super cool. I, I'm not the genius that came up with this. Um, I wish I was, but... So, as you can see right here, it actually outputted into our uh, console here what the uh, collisions are. You can see there's our three, you can see there's our four, and th you know this is essentially just a map of, uh, of, what, our, of what our level looks like. And uh, it's all stored in an array, and it all you know, checks and builds from, from that array. So that's how that works. Let's see, then we have a check Y salad and check X salad, which are, they're, they're pretty much pulled right from the, uh, once again, right from the HTML5 tutorial, although I did have to make some changes in order for it to actually work, because uh, one of the problems I was encountering was, okay, if your player or object or whatever wasn't the exact same dimension as the tiles, you would run into issues. You'd start walking through tiles because this is also based on checking for checking for points around the object. And if you're only checking the corners, well, if you have a a tile sticking out around center, you're gonna walk right through it. So I had to rewrite some things to make it so it checks all the way down the sides. You know, based on the uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, ba well, based on the base. So that's you know checking uh, that's checking the y coordinate. That's checking the x coordinate. And then get array index. So this here is a, a more. This is more internal workings. Um, so, so what you type in here is you type in the tile index, and it, and it returns the array index. Uh, you know the where it is in the global array, which is useful for more in, internal stuff. And I guess that pretty much does it for the scripts. Um, let's see. Well, I, well, I guess back on this, if you really had to. Uh, um, address the the you know the your, the global uh, collision groups uh, directly. You know you can use that to find out which one you want to address or which index you want to address. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, um, like I said, you know I have a I have a plat I have a platforming example and I have a top down example, which is more like a traditional RPGs. Um, you know the movement is obviously much more simple than a platforming engine. But you know as you can see, you know we still we just simply use the H speed and V speed. And uh, it all collides magnificently. Um, you can build pretty much any movement engine you can possibly want through this. Well, I guess that pretty much sums it up. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to uh, leave a comment or send me a message. Um, oh, also, also, I got set up on my website an area designated just for extensions. And I'm even putting my videos up on there. So... I'm going to have this up there, and in fact, there's going to be a link down in the description. You can go to my website, and there you will find documentation on this extension. And that, so you know, if you ever got to check back to it, you know, heck, you, you know, I, in fact, I'd recommend going there anyways because that's where you're going to be able to download it. So, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Hopefully, this will be very useful to you. Uh, thank you very much, and happy gaming.